of Eight by Paleo Rider. Chapter 12. Spike's heart felt like it was crumbling into as many pieces as there were gold coins in her cell. Rarity was sobbing at the bottom of his stem pile. SOBBING! To top it all off, despite being surrounded by more gold and gems he had ever seen in his life, Spike couldn't get himself to grow. It just wasn't working. Not when he knew Rarity wasn't safe. For a moment, there had been the smallest urge to snap one of the bigger gemstones to, next to his foot. But Rarity's tears squashed that desire down completely. Another sob escaped the unicorn on the key floor. And Spike couldn't take it any longer. He slid off his gem pile and walked over to her side. A nasty looking harness was padlocked onto her. And Spike knew that Rarity must not only be uncomfortable in it, Horrified at all the rust and dirt caked into the thing. I'm so sorry, Rarity. I told them I wouldn't let myself grow if they didn't set you free. But then, then they decided differently, he said, his tone dropping lamely at the sentence. He raised one hand and pat Rarity's shoulder, then lowered it without touching her. He wanted to comfort her, but given that he was the reason she was in this state... He wasn't sure she'd want his comfort. Verity looked at him through watering eyes. Spike, the last thing I wanted for you to come here and be forced to change. Promise me you won't let them turn you into something you don't want to be, even if they do set me free. Spike wasn't sure how to respond. Verity. Even talking quietly, their voices had an echo effect through the cave. I don't think I can make that promise. I have the power to fight off gargoyles. If I could get... Just grow big again. Spike! No! Verity gasped, her eyes flying open. Fight the gargoyles! Y y you She stammered, struggling to pull her up upright. No! You can't! Spike narrowed his eyes at her strong reaction. Wait! Why not me? Spike asked. Don't go there, Rarity. Not you, too. Because, because, because others can handle it, Verdi exclaimed, looking completely aghast at the thought. She continued to struggle to stand. You can't put yourself in danger like that. I simply won't allow my little Spikey Bucky to get hurt. Won't allow your... Spike took a deep breath, steadying himself and resisting the urge to clench his fist. He tried his best not to let his offended feelings bleed too much into his reply. So, she doesn't think I'm a dragon enough to take out gargoyles either? Maybe you don't know what's been going on out there, Rarity, but someone's got to stop the gargoyles! They've been fading Equestia! They're going to suck up power from Space Rocks and make a bid for the entire world! We can't exactly just sit around and wait for that to happen! Apparently, he didn't do a fantastic job keeping his emotions masked, because Rarity's blue eyes now shimmered with a glint of iciness. Well, excuse me if I've been out of the loop. It's not a city to live in the Ponyville Express the Dragon Prison Cells. Rarity Huff, falling back to the floor in a heap. Spike winced. And even if you're right, if someone does need to stop them, that someone does not need to be you. Ugh, this hottest. She kicked her back legs uselessly against the rocky ground. It's impossibly heavy. Rarity's horn began to glow. And Spike realized she was trying to alleviate the weight of the harness with her magic. Then, Ow! Rarity gasped. Her horn went bright, then out completely. Rarity! Spike exclaimed, freezing for her. He tried to tug at the harness, but had no idea how to help remove it. Oh, Rarity, we've got to get this thing off of you, he said. They could argue about his abilities to fight Gargoyle's lair. Spike realized how much of a burden the harness was for her. He's seeing her pull huge cartloads of tools. What was going on? Better watch out. That harness is especially designed to suppress unicorn magic and energy. A gruff voice said from the cave entrance. It was Spike's green-scaled guard. Hey! Spike spun. Verity peered out from behind him, toward the cave entrance. You take it off of her, right now! Under strict orders not to, the green guard replied. 
blowing a lazy smoke ring out over the cliff. Suppress my... Wait! Whatever do you mean? Randy asked. Why only now? If you were going to block my magic, why not do it earlier? A bead of sweat fell down the side of her face as he tried to stand once again. Earlier, you weren't around our mutual friend here. The guard gestured back at Spike. Can't have you using that unicorn magic to brainwash him into not doing his job. Brainwash him? Verity looked appalled. Like that's even possible. Actually, Spike said, back to thinking back to Twilight in the sea surface. It, uh, sort of is. It is sort of creepy. We've had a long history of unicorns, the guard said. We know what your kind is capable of, and we don't take any chances anymore. Well, really? Faraday sniffed. You may have a long history of unicorns, but you clearly haven't had a long history of respecting ladies. Rarity, maybe I can figure it out, Spike said quietly. Rarity looked at him, and he tried to give her a reassuring smile. Truth was, he was still a mixed basket of emotions toward her, especially regarding her views on how well he could handle himself against gargoyles. But that didn't mean he wouldn't find a way to set her free. Spike set to work on the harness, quickly finding the padlock. The keyhole was oddly safe, and Spike looked around, trying to see if there was some tool in this new horde he could use. Then an idea struck him. Hey, guard! Spike said, Yeah? The green dragon replied. You're supposed to get me whatever I want, right? So I start growing? Spike asked. Wasn't that what the Rojo guy told you? Yes. The guard raised an eyebrow slowly. Then, I want the key to this lock! Spike demanded. <laughs> the green dragon laughed. Nice try. You can have anything else, kid. No keys. The guard turned around again, blowing another smoke ring. Spike kicked a rock on the key floor. Stopping the padlock. Well, it was worth a shot. Spike grumbled. A valiant effort, dear. They smiled at each other. Spike angered at her faded for a moment. Honestly, as horrified as he was that she was in this situation at all, and as offended as he was that even Rarity doubted his ability to fight, it was good to see her. He missed her. Don't worry about me, Rarity told him, still lying on the ground because of the awful harness around her. I'll find a way to get them to take this thing off of me. I've already made some inroads here, after all. Though, where did Moxie go? Randy looked out of the cave, her expression failing. She shook her head. Oh, well, in the meantime, maybe you could feel on me on what's been going on. How the did you get here? And how did you know I was here? It seemed Rarity was willing to put their argument aside, so Spike went too. He sat down next to her and began to explain. Well, I guess it started after we were separated in the Everfree Forest. I woke up the next morning and found Sweetie Belle missing. Rarity found she couldn't speak right away when Spike's tail was over with. Oh, Sweetie Belle. Her eyes threatened to start watering again. At least her sister was being taken care of. She could think of no pony better suited for the task than Fluttershy. But to be so badly burnt? Rarity looked out of the cave, over the ocean. Smoke billowed over one of the cliff's edges, probably from a volcano, given the nature of rock around them. Thank you for updating me, Spike, Verity said quietly. It seems a lot has happened. Spike nodded at her side. Verity worked to wrap her mind around it all. Stefan, terribly hurt. Her own sister wounded. Their friends split up. The gargoyles, radiating for a major attack, and possibly growing in strength through the use of meteorites. Her gaze fell back on the little dragon at her side. And Spike, trading himself to the dragons in what he thought would be an exchange for her. Trading himself so he could grow to match the age of his egg and fight the gargoyles for his species. Couldn't he see that the dragons were just using him? That they didn't care? That she did? Verity shut her eyes. How did it all end up like this? All she wanted to know was that if there was a feasible way for her and Spike to be together. After all, that was why she had written to Princess Celestia about. And now, well, here you are, together at long last.
A sarcastic voice laughed at her inside her head. Hoppy! No. She answered herself, resting her chin on her front legs, still lying on the key floor. I most am certainly am not. Spike, Verity began. She hated to bring the topic up again, but she couldn't let it go. Horrible enough things had happened already. She might be trapped in a cave and her magic unusable because of some old har rusting harness, but she wasn't completely powerless. She could still keep Spike from turning huge and greedy again. Spike always fell to her persuasions, given enough pressure. Well, except for that one time he decided to go on the dragon migration. But uh, that was just one instance, and this won't be like that, right? Please. I know a lot has happened, but you can't let them force you to grow unnaturally. You just can't! Verity said. She scrunched her front hose towards her face, looking to appeal Spike's weakness for her pouts. Those awful dragons just want to use you. That's why they want you to change. You really don't have to do this. Spike just stared at her, severally crossing his arms. Haven't you been listening at all? I have to do this! Okay, so maybe this is more like the dragon migration situation than I realize. No, you don't, she argued, abandoning your pout and resorting back to logical reasoning. We can find another way to stop the conqueror, Spike. A way that doesn't involve you putting yourself in danger! Spike sighed and stood up to begin pacing. Verity, I can actually help this time! He said, I won't be the lame guy in the way or the baby left home at the library to let others fix things. There's actually something I can do. I can... Darling, please! Verity interrupted, reaching a hook forward. Admittedly, a little desperately by that point. Just listen to reason! I want to help! Spike growled, stamping his hoof. He glared down at her, and Rarity fell silent, actually shaking under her gaze. A new set of tears waited to fill from her eyes. Spikey? Spikey? I... that is... that I... Spike pursued his pacing, his brow creasing in duress. Listen, if I turn big, I, I can fight off a lot of gargoyles at once, and maybe help protect every pony I care about. I can't do that when I'm small. If I turn big, then maybe I can keep the gargoyles away. Does he see? But, but then what? Verity asked. Behind her, torches were lit at the cave entrance in preparation for nightfall. You just stay like that forever, keeping the gargoyles at bay as a huge, greedy beast of a dragon. The gems in their cell began to glimmer reflected firelight. And Rarity noticed that Spike did as well. Spike threw his hands in the air. Maybe! I don't know! I haven't gotten that far. Rarity looked up at him, wishing she could stand up and have more of possessive authority, as he was accustomed with Spike. But the harness barely allowed her to budge, as he was trapped, held against the ground. Spike! Please! Rarity realized he was begging, but she couldn't stop herself. We can't lose you like that! I can't! Spike looked at her sharply. You can't? Oh dear. She hadn't let that slip out. Rarity's already parts mouth felt even drier than before. She frantically tried to come up with some way to twist her own words. But they were already there, hanging between her and Spike. His fire reflecting eyes fixed on her with such intensity that Rarity found it hard to breathe. Well... If there was any chance that owning up to her feelings would keep Spike safe, then now was the time to stop hiding them. Rarity dropped her head, unable to look at him in the eye, as he prepared for what she knew she had to say. Her host took so bad, he looked almost blurry against the stone floor, as he really hoped Spike's guard wasn't listening too closely. I can't lose you, Spike. Please, she whispered. Not only when I've just started realizing how much you really mean to me. Spike's mouth dangled open, gawking at the unicorn in front of him. He was as stunned as he had been in the danger zone during one of Rainbow Dash's sonic rain booms. Was she? Did she? Could she? Half a million questions swirled through his brain at once. So, this isn't about not believing I can fight off gargoyles. Spike found himself asking, 
Ugh! He wanted to smack his head into the wall. Of all the things to go and ask, you go with that? Rain and the salty Desi! Desi! Oh, goodness, no! Verity looked back at him. Spike, I saw firsthand how powerful a grow dragon could be. I'm sure you could take on an enormous number of gargoyles. But if you do, you might end up hurt, or you might... She so learned her again. You might not be able to turn back. You might stay like... A monster? Spike finished for her, still reeling from her earlier words. She doesn't want to lose me. Oh, I wouldn't say monster. Verity pushed the dirt on the ground, looking far more self-conscious than he could ever remember her being in all the time he'd known her. You'd just be doing what dragons do after all. You know, rampating, roaring, hoarding things, that whole business. If you were a monster, that would make all dragons monsters. And that's a un rather unfair label, does he think? I mean, really? She was rambling. Spike was still frozen in place. Verity was rambling. Anyhow, the point I'm trying to make is that I don't know how we ever get you back. I don't know what did it the last time. You did, Spike said. Has he really never known that? Oh. Stila dies with him for a moment. Judging about how wide hers were. Spike realized she really hadn't known it was because of her that he went back to his normal size after his ponyfield rampage. He wondered, as their eyes didn't move from one another's, if her heart was beating as quickly as his. Verity cares about me. She, she needs me. She's nervous around me. If I fall into some alternate universe where everything is the exact opposite of what it normally is, what's happening? So... Verity carefully said, still looking at it into his eyes. If you were to grow again, and I was there to ask you to return to your normal self, would you be able to do this? Spike's heart squeezed in his chest. Yes, he wanted to say. Yes, yes, it is it, Verity, I love you. I don't know. He found himself saying instead, See, that big, scary version of me, technically, it still is me. Maybe it's time I embrace that. Stupid, 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 stupid! He braided himself, finally tearing his ways from the unicorn. Of all the times to assess over personal identity! Randy opened her mouth to a chat, but then said it again. Eventually, she nodded. I suppose I can respect that. It is your body and your mind, after all. What am I to tell you what to do with it? Who are you? You're my everything. You should be whoever you choose to be, Spike. Randy could see it. Her voice says above a whisper. Spike felt like everything inside of him twists like a pile of yarn Opal had gotten into. Make that thorn-covered yarn. Make that exploding thorn-covered yarn. He couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much. Knowing that Rarity not only cared, but accepted him for whatever choice he made about himself. Knowing that there was only one way to keep her safe, and that was to turn into a creature, but not, not even mem remember Rarity. Must have loved her as he did. Tears spilled out from his eyes, as he had no more room in his skull for anything else now that it had been overwhelmed with so many thoughts and feelings. Verity! He threw his arms around her neck, holding her tight. His forehead bumped up against the rustling harness she wore, and the remainder of her imprisonment just made him sob harder. Verity felt numb, and yet was intensely aware of the dragon clinging to her, like some sort of wet, scaly winter scarf. She put a hoof to Spike's back, wishing once more that she could stand upright, rather than lying awkwardly on the floor. It's alright, Spike, she managed to say. It'll be alright. You, you do what you need to do, and I'll be here for you, darling. She swallowed down her real emotion, caressing the dragon's back and leaning her head against his little shoulder. Spike shook, tremors moving from him from the tip of his head through his toes. Rarity had hoped to calm him down, but the emotional floodgates were open. The poor deer was terrified and unsure. That much was obvious, and her confession of feelings probably hadn't helped stem his confusion. Way to go, Rarity, she tired herself, trying to help him by convincing him to stay small just because you told him to. Manipulating him by revealing your feelings at probably what was the worst possible time! 
Verity's heartache. It still did her face as she struggled to keep her tears back. What were you thinking? Verity wished she could find a hole somewhere to curl up in and hide so she wouldn't accidentally hurt him more. But she couldn't pull herself away from him. Because when it came down to it, all she actually wanted to do was hold him close and cry in return. The thought of Spike choosing to grow and remain huge had shot an icy shard of panic straight into her heart. Last time he'd been that way, he'd been so unruly he'd forgotten, he'd forgotten all his friends and lost all respect for their emotions and belongings. He couldn't really want that again, could he? So, it is only natural to want to accept oneself for one whose one is. Maybe this really is something Spike needs to do. And maybe I need to stand aside and let him make his own choices. She shuddered. But if he turns into what he's hoping to turn into, the dragons might abuse him as an ally. He might end up seriously hurt or worse. Verity blinked, practically begging her eyes to stop tearing up already. Has he cried enough for today? Spike, I promise, I'll stay by your side. You can do whatever you think is best. But I'm going to be with you to make sure you're safe. Why, if anything happens to you, I... I... The horrible thought crumbled what was left of Verity's fragile emotions. Oh, Spike! She took up a job of her own and finally gave a tent into her tears. She clogged to a tire and the two of them shook together. Rarity wasn't sure for how long they held each other, but it was well into the night when the crying stopped and the last of her tears dried up. Back down at the cave's entrance, the guard had changed, but sadly Moxie wasn't a replacement. The dark sky told her they longed to miss sunset, and eventually Rarity had no choice but to shift her legs a bit underneath her to avoid cramping. The hardest creaked as she did so, and Spike had really pulled back. To give her room to move. The removal of Spike's body from her side was like a cold splash of water. The night air moved into the gap between them, making her shiver. And for some reason, it was then that Rarity became fully self-conscious of what she revealed to Spike earlier. The little dragon stood near her, rubbing his arms, and she desperately wanted to go back to holding him. But the idea of asking to do so made her so horrifically tongue-tied the Rarity wasn't sure she'd be able to speak again. Goodness, asking would only remind him of what I said about, about, well, not about wanting to lose him. Verity's heart raced. There'd be no getting around it no more. It'd be confirmed. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, 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 dear. How did I ever let that get out? How do I face him now? I told him I... She could feel her face flushing. as she turned away from the dragon to look out at the moonlight. Verity? Spike asked. Yes, Verity replied. She didn't trust herself to say anything else. No matter what happens with me, I'm going to make sure you'll be okay, he said. I'll make sure you're safe. She glanced back at him. He stood in the moonbeam, determination coloring her, his face. His eyes were on the horizon, watching the soothing stars. I know, Spike, she replied quietly. As he really did, she realized. It was the truth she'd come to accept over the years, without ever fully realizing she learned it. Spike would keep her safe, and she would keep him safe. That was just how things were. Watching Spike in that moment, Verity finally made peace between her mind and heart. Spike was the dearest, noblest soul she ever met, and he cared deeply before her. More than she deserved, based on how generally she treated him. Moxie's words from the night before through her head. I don't see a problem. And neither do I, when I really think about it. Reddy thought a small hint of a smile come on. Why shouldn't we be together? He cares for me, I care for him. What's stopping us? And neither do I, when I really think about it. Reddy felt a small hint of a smile come on. Why shouldn't we be together? He cares for me, I care for him. What's stopping us? Outside. Not even a cricket chirped. Rarity's question was answered. Nothing was stopping them. Rarity took a deep breath, taking in the cool air and blinking a few times, feeling oddly content for being in their current predicament. It was a refreshing change of emotion. Spike! She asked. It was time to be open. It was time to give Spike what he deserved. I'm, 
I'm afraid this harness won't let me move very far. Perhaps you could come closer again? It's going to get chilly tonight. Spike's moonlit expression went from bold and determined to flabbergasted. It panicked in under a second. And the poor deer fell backwards in shock. Barry giggled as he flailed, trying to stay upright, and only managing to do so because his own tail caught him. <laughs> oh, oh, Spike, she said, shaking her head. Relax. I'd just like to, uh... Rarity felt her blush returning. She should have known just if she wouldn't be able to keep out the air of non-embarrassment for long. I just think it'd be nice if we... Well, if you really do grow into that giant dragon soon, then this might be our only chance to... Uh, that is... Oh, goodness, Rarity. So stammering. You're making this out to sound like a far more indecent proposal than it actually is. That is to say... Maybe we could go back to holding each other again, at least for the night. I rather like that. Yeah, Spike said, nodding dumbly. Yeah, of course. He took a few steps back toward her, attentively put an arm around her neck again. <laughs> You're simply adorable and flustered, you know that, dear? Rarity asked, wrapping her hoof around him. Me? <laughs> Fluster? <laughs> I've never been better! Spike boasted, giving her a small green. You, however, are selling more than a little flustered. Ma, Verity Scott, don't be ridiculous, she said. But she couldn't stop a sigh of contentment from escaping her as he settled down next to her, leading into her side. This was right. This felt right. It'll be nice to have tonight, at least, I guess, Spike said, his tone changing to something far more grim. Tomorrow, I need to try to grow again. Verity swallowed. Then nodded. Shutting her eyes, she rested her head against his. And if that's your decision, then I'll help you. She hated the words coming out of her mouth, but she knew they were true. She really would help Spike do anything he decided he needed to do. Spike chucked another ruby across the cave, storing out puffs of smoke. It wasn't working. Why wasn't it working? Give me another gem! Spike ordered. Just as he decided he should. Asking politely, wasn't how he groaned the first time after all. Rarity, guarding her pile of gems, put a hoof to her forehead in mock distress. Don't you do take any more! These are mine! Spike danced over and grabbed a gem, running back across the cave to shove it in his neck. The smallest sensation of want it needed coursed through him, but before he could grasp it, it was gone again. Spike sagged his head at defeat. Not fair! You leave those steps to me alone, mister! They belong to me! Verity goaded, dramatically tossing her mane. If Spike had been so frustrated that his entire ploy wasn't working, he might have been more amused at how much Rarity had gotten into her role. But instead, all he could feel was disappointment. You can stop, Rarity! I give up! Spike kicked at his stone pile, scaring several of them across the cave. He caught one and tossed it into his mouth, chewing, then swallowing. I just don't know what else to do. So he tried to react and frowned a little in concern. Maybe it's not working because you aren't actually taking anything new. Mary D suggests. With a full night's rest and a good breakfast in her, she had a bit more strength today. It was actually managing to stand in her harness. So he took a step towards Spike as he gently placed one hoof on his shoulder. Maybe we need to have you demand more from the guard again. But they tried that already. The guard had brought them item after item after item. And while each tickled at Spike's greed, none managed to capture it the way he had experienced on his birthday. And he wanted so badly to grow this time. He needed to grow. It was just... Spike glanced on the hoof on his shoulder, then up to Rarity's eyes. He knew the problem, even if he didn't want to fully admit it. Last time he had grown huge, he nearly hurt Rarity, and with her still kept there, he felt like he'd be betraying his own decree, that he wouldn't grow at all as long as he was a prisoner. That was all there was to it, really. Spike knew it. He knew he had to own up eventually. He couldn't grow with Rarity around. His feelings for her went against everything that made him greedy, and thus now were compounded by the understanding that she felt something in return. Spike turned for Rarity and nodded decisively. She needed to go. And at that thought, the thought of sending her away from him, 
Something in his chest growled. Very tough foot off Spike, Soldier. Spike! She exclaimed. You did it! Yeah! You grew a little taller! Spike froze in place. He was taller. He felt it. No. His face paled. You did it! You... Oh. Verdi bit her lower lip. Oh no. You're back to being your regular size again. Spike stumbled away from the unicorn. Clutching at his chest. He'd almost let his greed focus on Rarity. He grabbed at the walls. No. He never allowed it to happen. Never again. You have to get her away. She has to go free. For her own safety. That was the final straw. It was time to take action. Guard! Spike demanded. Marching up to their cell bars. Go get Brojo! Tell him I figured out how to grow! Spike caught Rarity's inquiring eye as his guard flew away with the news. He couldn't let himself to share his revelation with her. She looked down, her head tilted in an innocent curiosity that reminded Spike of her little sister. But Rarity's eyes revealed a sadness Spike had never seen a sweet bell. As much as Rarity told him that he could be whatever he wanted to be, he knew she didn't want him to turn into a beast again. Frankly, he didn't exactly want it either. What choice did he have? Rarity, he stated. But then, a surprisingly familiar feeling <coughs> began to rumble in his throat, and a green flame brought it forth. A scroll fell into the cell floor, its spike eyes flew open. A letter for Princess Celestia! Is that what I think it is? Verdi guessed. Yeah! Spark replied, just as shocked. Must be a reply for the message Twilight had me send yesterday morning. All thoughts of getting himself to grow and setting Rarity were free pushed aside for the moment. He picked up the scroll and walked it over to Rarity so they could read it together. Dear Twilight, My sister has spent the night analyzing the meteor threat. It is unfortunately far worse than even you had feared. By midnight tomorrow night, the largest pieces of the asteroid collision will head our way. These must be what the gargoyles are waiting for, based on your brother's assessment of their attack strategy so far. The good news is that with Pinkie Pie's help, We've managed to keep the gargoyles from acquiring much of Equestria's rocky resources. The bad news is that it's taken most of my strength to do so. I am uncertain in how helpful I will be in directing these meteors, though I will do what I can during the day when my power is the greatest. While my sister has been working with Rainbow Dash to defend our innocent civilians, which is our number one priority, she will spend tonight attempting to avert the incoming debris to a new course as well. With her manner of powers, I believe she'll be far more effective than I. However, I worry that even she may not be powerful enough to simultaneously move the moon, defend against the gargoyles, and reroute hundreds of meteors. It is thus that I ask for your help, Twilight Sparkle. We will need your magic to assist in moving each rock away from our world and out of the reach of the gargoyles. If they manage to absorb the largest pieces headed our way tomorrow evening, I do not admit to imagine the horror they would unleash. My dear student, I am sorry to burden this with you. I should not do so if I didn't know you could rise to the occasion. Sincerely, Princess Celestia. Spike and Rarity looked at each other at what they finished. Spike's mind reeled. This was not good. Whatever shall we do? Rarity asked. How do we let Twilight know? At first, Spike didn't know how to answer. But he realized there was a simple solution. One that fit into his current plan pretty much perfectly. Spike closed his eyes and pushed the letter at Rarity. Well, let her know, because you'll take this to her. I... What? Rarity blinked. Suddenly back to step and nearly losing her balance under her harness. You're going to leave, Rarity, Spike said. I can't... I can't grow with you here. It's just not working. I still understand that. they will have to set you free. Rarity's mouth hung open. As Spike rolled the scroll back up, it tented behind her ear, giving one last hug. Then he wordlessly stepped away, picking up a gem and squeezing it. It was for the best. It was all for the best. Rarity spent several moments just staring at him. Finally, she found the words she'd been searching for. Spike, I... So, what's this I hear? A voice interrupted Rarity. The cave rattled as a couple of dragons landed just outside. She glared at whoever it was that had just arrived. 
Turquoise scales shimmered at the edge of their cell, and the door swung open with a clang. Rojo! Verity said, not bothering to keep the malice out of her voice. Her head still smarted from where he hit her. The dragon set to the side, dropping to all fours to fit. You've figured out how to grow, have you? He asked Spike, completely ignoring Rarity to start a puff of smoke over Spike. Spike nodded. Other than his little purple hands shaking by his side, he held his ground well against the brute. Rarity had to admire his nerve, even as he fumed that he decided on a plan of action without consulting her. A plan of action that involved sending her away. Couldn't he see that she needed to be here with him? Admittedly, she couldn't think of another way to get Princess Celestia's message to Twilight, but it sounded like there was more behind kicking her out than just turning her into a delivery girl. An ill feeling took hold in Rarity's stomach. She did not like where this was going. So, why haven't you grown yet? Rosa demanded, slamming a fist into the cave wall. Rarity ducked her head instinctively, but luckily, none of the stalactites fell. Rarity gave Spike one last sorrowful look, and her heart felt like it was tearing straight down the middle. Because I can't do it with Verity here, Spike explained, turning back to Rojo. When he's here, I care too much about others, about her. As long as I'm worried about her safety, I don't think I'll ever be able to give it to my greed. She has to go. But, but Spike, Verity gasped, unable to keep quiet any longer. He was sending her away, and somehow, she had to stop that from happening. She had to. Without me with you, how do I know you'll be safe? How do I know the other dragons won't use you as some sort of a gargoyle punching bag? If I'm gone, how do I help you? Spike stared at the floor. He had no answers for her. His silence cut through her like scissors or silk. Her horrible harness began to weigh on her once more. As he found she could scarcely take a step forward toward the little dragon, no matter how badly she strained to do just that. Brojo, meanwhile, narrowed his eyes. He finally looked over and acknowledged the unicorn. Interesting. Maybe that guard of hers was really onto something. Moxie! Verity thought, feeling a rush of betrayal. Not only was her heart breaking, it was getting trampled on. So it is more than just infatuation, Rosso stated, turning back to Spike. It's not just a romantic notion you hold in your raised by ponies full brain. He shook his head, dumbfounded. I didn't think it was possible, but it seems that this pony is actually your choice for a life mate. Spike had just popped up proudly, about to respond, but then paused and raised an eyebrow. My, what now? Rosa didn't clarify, and Rarity figured it was just as well. She wasn't sure how she could take hearing Spike declare his lifeline to Fosin for her. Not when they were about to be separated, for Celestia knows how long. Not forever, she pleaded internally. Not separated forever. I'll find a way, Spikey Wacky. That does change things, Rosa said. Well, what it really means is, you need to set her free, Spike demanded. Verity felt like she was watching this all unfold from some far removed tower. This couldn't be real. This couldn't actually be happy. She wasn't ready. She knows Spike was set on growing to match the age of his egg, but she wasn't ready to say goodbye like this. Roger laughed. <laughs> Perhaps I should. Having her here hasn't helped you along in any case. And a life mate isn't something to be hoarded. It all happened so fast. Verity was pulled out of her cell in chains in what seemed like an instant. Spike! She managed to call out one last time. She tried to force her way out of her chains with a burst of her magic, but then felt after her head had been filled up with sand. Her answer was because her heart just exploded into a million pieces inside her. Verity's horn flickered out, and her legs felt limp in her sides the moment she tried to kick. No! No! Spike! Claws gripped at her, crushing the harness against her coat. Reality blurred, and the edges of her vision were lost to her. She and Spike looked at each other, and he was all she could see. Rarity desperately tried to say it with her eyes, what she wasn't able to say out loud. Don't get yourself killed. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who I am. Don't forget how much you mean to me. 
She couldn't tell if he comprehended any of her silent pleas. Then she was in the air, being flown away. He would have to face whatever came next on his own. She might never see the spiky waggy she'd grown to care for ever again. Spike punched straight through a pile of stems as soon as the other dragons left. Laying out a screen, he dove into another, kicking like a foal having a tantrum. Rarity! His eyes watered. At least he'd be safe now, even if they hadn't been able to say a real goodbye. He burst out a massive jet of flame toward the wall, wrapping his arms around himself and collapsing on the floor, his mouth searing. He just wanted to squeeze himself out of existence. What was he doing? Was this what he really wanted? Spike wiped at his eyes, trying to settle down. Verity was gone. He had gotten what he wanted, at least in that regard. She was safe. Safe. Somewhere he might never be able to see her again. The least he could do was do the job he originally came here for. He let himself scan the piles of gems, working to calm his breathing. He had to do this. He was past the point of changing his mind. It took a moment. But eventually, the twinkle of the jam caught his attention. Need. What? What? Like when Rarity was near, this time, the urge didn't disappear. That feeling remained. A renewed determination, Spike grabbed. Then, he grabbed something else. And something else. At least then he grabbed. It became easier and easier to grab another. Those desperate, coursing emotions filled his desire to keep everything close to him. If he couldn't have Rarity... He'd have every other thing he could get his claws on. What? What? Spike wanted things. And there was no point there to stop him from taking.